If you want relationships, everything about it is gonna feel awkward, especially in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, we've got so, we've lost the, the muscle of connection, right? We don't even, we haven't practiced that in a while. We've gotta rebuild that and we've got to practice that again. Loneliness is a topic that I think all of us can relate to. Nobody wants to be lonely. People want relationships. They want to be valued. Uh, they want to go through life together with somebody. But there's a lot of topics that you could have picked to write a book on. What made you double click on loneliness and community? Uh, Find Your People is the name of your book. Oh, I mean, it is a lonely season. Now, the interesting thing is I actually dreamed this project up five years ago, not knowing we would be heading into a pandemic and right. people would be lonelier than ever. But prior to the pandemic, the statistics were three in five people said they were lonely. So my guess today after a pandemic or in the midst of one still is, you know, that's, that number's got to be four and five, if not five and five, right? We're all isolated more than we ever have been. And so this is a huge problem. And it's not just a huge problem. Spiritually speaking, we were obviously built by God to live in community with each other. But physically, it is one of the most dangerous things you can do for your health. It is worse than obesity. It is worse than alcohol. It is worse than smoking. That's what the scientists are saying. And so this is something that we're all craving. You're right. But it feels almost like this huge mountain now of how do we climb it and how do we get to the other side and actually have the relationships we long for? Because we're all kind of tired. I, I feel like that's the, yeah. the mood of everyone right now is we're all a little exhausted and it feels daunting to do this. So the reason I picked it was I do believe it's living, it's life. I mean, if you look at throughout history, like what brings meaning to life, it's relationships. It's a relationship with God and a relationship with each other. So to me, this is not something ancillary to living. This isn't something that, that we should um, try to fit into our lives. This is actually life and living, but it's just not how our culture is designed to live the way that others have been. What does loneliness look like today? Some people might think I'm not, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not alone, but I feel lonely. Let me affirm you. If that's how you feel, you are not alone. <laughs> what I did was I looked at the Bible, I looked at history, and I looked at science. And I also looked at other cultures. How do they live today? Well, most other cultures live like most generations have lived before us, which, which is in a village context. So. I would say part of the problem, you're saying there's more people on the planet and there's more connection than we've ever had. That's part of the problem. Humanly, we are not designed um, for a capacity of thousands and thousands of people's problems. Mm. We're not. We're, we're actually designed to carry about 150, which is how most societies were set up to, to live. And so it, what, it's no wonder that we're exhausted with compassion fatigue and that, that it feels like we don't know how to help anyone because we're carrying the problems literally of the world. And we're a little bit connected with a lot of people. We were designed to connect deeply with two to five people day in and day out. That was how we were meant to live. And then a, a larger village of 50 people, which might include you know, Sunday school teachers that you know, or friends of your kid's soccer team, or if you're single, people that live in your vicinity, your neighbors, your coworkers. That is the village that we currently live in, but we don't view it that way because those are somewhat strangers to us. We, we sit next to them at games and we scroll our phones. We don't actually have a 30 minute conversation. And so mm. that connection on our phones has taken away from the conversations we'd be having in real life because we're all distracted. And so what I propose in the book is let's bring back village life to our everyday. It's gonna take a little more effort because we don't depend on each other for hunting and gathering and agriculture like most generations have, but we do need each other. And I think the emotional needs that we're all carrying right now can be the grounds for how we begin to connect, but it takes vulnerability and it takes a little bit of risk. I understand that you recently moved. You moved from Austin to Dallas. And so just by the fact that you're in a new location, you've probably got to make new friends. Did you feel lonely when you went to an entirely mm -hmm. new environment? And what did you do about that? Oh, it was so lonely. I mean, we moved to Dallas and it was just down the highway three hours from Austin. And we did have some family members here, but we were pretty much completely starting over. We're a family of six and every one of my kids had to make friends. I had to make friends, my husband had to make friends. And the first year, probably like a lot of people, we didn't really get out much. Like nobody invited us to anything. We were just home with each other, which, which I, I make a case for, for family being a great place to start with friendships, um, a difficult place sometimes, but we had that, but we really didn't have other friends. And so it took a lot of intentional choices that we had to each make. And I would say <laughs> awkward choices. That's the thing with this is if you want relationships, 
everything about it is going to feel awkward, especially in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, we've got so, we've lost the, the muscle of connection, right? We don't even, we haven't practiced that in a while. We've got to rebuild that and we've got to practice that again. And so I would say, you know, in that season when I was practicing and I had to make calls and I had to, you know, it was awkward and I reached out to, I mean, it's funny, I had a summer camp counselor 20 years later that lived in the neighborhood near me because one of my goals was proximity. It's a whole pattern that I, I built into the book because what I looked at was village life and how, did, how have they always done it and how could we do it? And it begins with proximity, who's around you. And so my goal was five friends and five miles. How could I five, find five friends and five miles so that we might run into each other at the grocery store, so that we might could take a walk together in the morning and it not waste half our day, so that we could be in each other's kids' lives and, and help parent and co-parent together. So that was my goal. So the only person that I kind of had a connection with was 20 years ago, my camp counselor. So I reach out to her, it felt desperate, and I invite her into my, you know, crazy of, of just moving, and we bonded. And, and that led to a small group. And I just think that awkwardness of reaching out and saying, hey, can you go to coffee? And then saying, hey, will you be my friend? Or hey, could I join your small group? Or hey, you know, where do you go to church? Or how could we, you know, how could we hang out more? I think all of that feels really awkward for people but that's how friendships are made. It is awkward because we're so <laughs> used to texting somebody, right? I mean, when I was younger and I met my wife, it's because we were working together or we went to church together or you, you bumped into them at the grocery store or you went to school <laughs> together, you went to college. Right. And now it's yeah. like, which dating app am I gonna try to see who I can connect <laughs> right. with? And yet what you're saying, five friends in five miles sounds so like, oh yeah, like let's try that. That yeah. sounds like great, a great idea. I love how you mentioned in your book that you see community in the Bible, even in the Garden of Eden, with Adam, Eve, and God in fellowship with them as a bit of heaven on earth. I love that kind of language. Why, why yeah. do you call that heaven on earth? And do you think it's possible for us to have that again today? Well, it was super cool because when I did the research of how people have always lived in villages, I saw patterns of living that go back to pre-garden. Like you see it in its best form with Adam and Eve and God. But you see first, God create man. And before the fall, he says, that's not good. It's not good for man to be alone. And so you see the first statement over mankind being, it's not good for us to be alone. God is not alone. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's been in community forever. He is communal in his very being. And then you see him build a human and he says, it's not good for you to be alone because you're communal in your being. One of my counselors says it this way. He says, um, his name's Kurt Thompson. And he says, we come into the world looking for someone looking for us. We come into the world as a baby looking for someone looking for us and we really never get over that. For the rest of our lives, we're looking for someone looking for us. So in our DNA, the way that God built us in his image, we are communal. We want to be seen. We want to be comforted. We want to be known. And so the way God built us was for this. So when we don't have it, there's a chasm. We feel it. We feel something that we put a word to called loneliness, but it expresses itself in lots of different ways. And then because we feel that chasm, we cope with it and try to you know, fill it with social media, with, with success, with lots of things, but ultimately we're built to be known. Now the hard part about that <laughs> is to truly be known, you gotta be vulnerable. Well, that stinks because honestly, once you're vulnerable, then you risk being rejected, you risk, for me, there were times that people took the things I shared with them and they used it against me mm. and they shared it with other people, right? And all of us have had those experiences where we tried this and it didn't work. So I just wanna say, if you're listening and you're thinking, I, I have already done this and it didn't work, I get it. I, <laughs> a lot of the book is about that, how it didn't work for me but it's still worth fighting for. And it's still worth doing it again and again. It's just that it isn't easy. And so the way, when I looked at heaven on earth, it was Adam and Eve, it was that they, they did that with vulnerability. They did it with proximity. They had a, a shared mission, which I think is important for friendships to mean something. Um, they, they were consistent with each other. And so you saw these patterns of living that you also see um, throughout villages. And, and so in my mind, it's like, gosh, nobody ever taught me how to, how to do this. I never got a first grade class in how to be friends and how to keep community close. And yet um, that's kind of what we needed. And so <laughs> I tried to keep it super basic and to hold people's hand. You can have this, it's all around you. This is how you get it. But I do think it would have been nice to have a class in first grade and learn it that way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron. And thanks for watching the Kirk Cameron on TV and YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And be sure to share your takeaway in the comments. 
and invite a friend to join the conversation.